like traveling through an organic silk or a cloth will be very different to a plastic. The way that the light disperses and diffuses is, is different and the way it wraps around the subject. I think actually in reality cloth is always better for many reasons because it's probably cheaper. You can cut it up, you can shape it, you can, it doesn't make a noise, all those things and that's why grid cloth I think is somewhere in between. It's an easier thing to use in a way than traditional diffusion but obviously lights are changing. Uh, LEDs tend to be soft lights as well so you're not diffusing as much. Colour temperature will change. As soon as you add a diffusion, it'll be a bit cooler. So that's the other thing. We tend to use unbleached muslin, which is a lighter um, or a thin canvas, which light will travel through and, and diffuse much more. I totally agree with Bob Richardson because I think actually plastic is a little bit of a lie. I think it's there. It's an efficient thing because it's heat resistant. Silk and cotton tend to burn out after a while and you have to replace them. But again, you can just chop them up. You know, you can put them on the floor. They're much more versatile. You can wash them. Whereas a diffusion plastic, you can't. Uh, but in reality, you can use whatever you want. You can go to Ikea and buy a shower curtain and use that. You can, you know, use man-sized Kleenex if you want to use it. It's up to you. It's brown paper. You can use anything you want. You know, the only thing that you'll get leaf filters or Roscoe or anything else is it's a heat resistant. It won't change color. It won't change shape. It won't change depth. It'll just eventually fade over time. But it's like you could use it a hundred times over and it wouldn't make any difference. I don't think it would cotton it, probably would, but you wouldn't be worried about it so much because you would just basically recycle it. Colour temperature, again, some people get very fastidious with it. You know, is there a difference between an eighth and a quarter? Yes, of course there is a difference. But actually, to your eye, can you really tell? You know, if you use an unbleached muslin or a bleached muslin, people, again, very particular, have to come from a certain place, do a certain thing. I think if you went to any uh, cloth shop, you'd get the same thing. The only thing I have struggled with is a grid cloth with colour in it, and I've never found... The only people who do a good one is a rag trade in LA, who have a very good... Roscoe do a good one as well, but a lot of them are very green, so the, it's about dyeing techniques and all those things. A lot of the time we've taken cloth and dyed it down ourselves so we can get find our own grade of colour temperature. And then when you get into the colour temperature gels, again, I prefer CTS to CTO because it's slightly less red. It's more uh, yellow, which I prefer. I don't like using diffusion a lot if you can avoid it. And obviously these days you can with LEDs. But I think err uh, on the side of caution. I think too blue and too warm kind of give it away and it's finding those subtle tastes i think that do um green uh, plus green minus green again some people get very worried about it I, I i think if you can see it then it's bad you know if you can tell a light's green then obviously it's too green if it's a, a an eighth i'm like mm, okay i think if you've got a row of hmis and one is green obviously you can tell and if you can take that out of the equation then do so but i think some people light to a color temperature meter which i find odd i think it's not quite right Light's an organic thing, so it's always going to be different. It's always going to change. You walk around any street at night, everything's different. And I think if you try and flatten everything out, it becomes rather boring and rather lifeless. We had a good challenge on a film I did with Martin Ruhr called Harry Brown, where we had the Greenhouse Estate, which is huge. And there's lights everywhere, practical lights, people's lights, street lights, everything. Our biggest challenge, we went out for dinner one night and he was worried about it and was talking about it. And I said, well, maybe we shouldn't try and change it. Let's go with it. So basically we used sodium flood lighting. We got some Atlas fittings, which are very cheap, very powerful, but there's very brutal light. It's, there's nothing you can do with it. And we just stuck them up on stands in shot. We didn't worry about changing everything the other way. We went with it. And I think that released us from a lot of stress. Again, I think everybody's got their own thing. Night scenes tend to be a big thing, you know, that people do night work and some people use a bit of cyan, other people use nothing. Some people go full HMI, which again, moonlight isn't blue. It, I mean, moon is a reflected surface. It's not blue, it's probably gray, if anything. You look at Hollywood films from a certain period, everything is blue at night. And I'm like, where does that happen? You know, who, who decided that? And I find that very strange. So, you know, again, I think erring on the side of caution with those kind of things is better, unless you're doing a very stylized piece and you can be. But I think keeping it within a certain range is better. Vittorio Storaro always has this great thing about colour, which I agree with, colour is very much of a mood thing. All the effects colours, like primary reds, yellows, greens, blues, all those things, 
where do they come from in a shot? I mean, would you use them in an urban setting inside a house? Well, they've got to be motivated from somewhere, but you are at liberty to do whatever you want. It's whether you can justify putting that in, you know, a bright red source or whatever. But I think used to the right effect in minimal things can be very good. It's just, uh, again, it's about taste. Well, I think, again, you set your taste early on. In the testing, we'll put a CTS on or a CTO, see what we like. Could even be an added layer of something else to so just change it and adapt to it another way. On Crazy Rich Asians, we always had quarter CTS. Practically on every lamp was quarter CTS on tungsten light. And my gaffer there would constantly ask for quarter CTS. And I said, why don't you just cut it and keep it with the lamp? Because you're always going to use it. And it's that that choice, you know, was set way back. And with every lamp that went out would have a CTS on it. So I, my thing is that I would almost automatically, if I called for a light, I'd always say with the CTS, just bring it. And the variation on that, you know, if you're adding another quarter, then you're going quite a long way off the parameter we've already set. All the other things are, you know, a crafting light is really then how you sculpt it, soften it, break it down, flag it, all those other things. I guess what I would say is I'd always bring it because you can always offer it. It would rarely go the other way where you're adding a quarter blue unless it's from a mo another motivation. So if the lamp was outside of the room, from another from the exterior or from another room then you'd say well to ring the change you might just say well we'll put an extra we'll put a quarter blue on but that's probably one percent or ten percent of the lights that you'd use 90 percent would be a quarter cts so you just constantly use that and then sometimes i just change it or offer it as a change just to see what it's like to to change the flavor a little bit but it's not you know i don't think you're going to shift so far left or right that it would be a problem in that sense Thank mm -hmm. you.